Signore, santifica l'amore di questi sposi, l'anello che porteranno come simbolo di fedeltà, li richiami continuamente al vicendevole amore per Cristo nostro Signore. Amen. Amen. Maria recibe questo anello. Uh, se seno mi amore uh, della mia fedeltà uh, uh, della mia fedeltà hardly speak his own bleeding language nel nome un padre e del figlio e, e dello spirito santo Franco ricevi questo anello segno del mio amore e della mia fedeltà in nome del Padre e del Figlio e del Spirito Santo. Vi benedica Dio Onnipotente, Padre, Figlio e Spirito Santo. Amen. Amen. Slip out and have a quiet one on the way. It's all changed, isn't it? Well, you've all done well, though, haven't you? Church is about the only bit of little Italy left. Yeah, right, Arthur. They've all moved out. Finchley, Barnet. You know, some have even got places in Stanmore. Stanmore? Nice. Yeah. Hey, ciao, Maria, eh? Huh? <laughs> but they don't feel Italian no more. <laughs> no? Especially Franco. I mean, he won't have none of that now, will he? Not Franco. He's got to be Frank now. <laughs> you know, I've still got the grandfather's old place in Tuscany. I thought they'd like it for the honeymoon. Tunisia. You're going to Tunisia. Little Davy Pollard had heart attack last week. Did you hear about no. that? No. Mind you, he's marching on a bit, Davy. Seven years older than me. <laughs> That's what I mean, Alfie. You know, I'm sorry young Terry couldn't make it. Be a nice lunch. It's his mum. He's a boy that likes to look after his mum. Nice to hear. He'll be well sorry. He loves a church service and a luncheon, does young Terry. You out and get your nick, what you want. What are you talking about? The bloody tarts, mate! Tarts? Listen, son, some of these girls have got children. They're mums. Now, how would you feel if someone behaved like you did in front of your mum, mate? Eh? You're not suggesting, are you? That you'd find my mother in a place like this? Not at all, no. But she wouldn't be too pleased to see you here either, would she? Come on. Get back to the building site. I'm a few bags of cement about, eh? Yes, sir, mate. Don't worry. But don't come back. You should have given him a whack, Terry. Teach him a lesson. Nah, if they don't get steamed up, they want the money back, don't they? Some of these characters, they just don't know how to behave in the West End. Still, thanks very much, Terry. I'll have a word with Arthur later. Okay. Terry! Hello. 
Just to say thanks on behalf of the other girls. Any time. Some of the guys get carried away, but that bloke has been a right nuisance. Ah, sure, acting at least. Turn them on, you can't turn them off. You've been watching me then? Not many. Like what you saw? This happens, yeah. I'm on round the corner in ten minutes. Oh, no, you might excite me beyond my control. It's too dangerous. What time do you finish? About eight o'clock. You asking me for a drink then? Yeah, sounds like it, doesn't it? I'm packing it in next week. I'm going to be an hostess. Pan Am? No, a sauna club in Notting Hill. Yeah, all right, then I'll see you at Dave's about 8.15, right? Yeah. All right, I won't have time to go home and change, so I'll just come in me working gear. You don't wear anything when you work. Ain't you the lucky one, then, eh? Yeah. I don't know why it's caught on the way it has. I mean, it's not like snooker, is it? No. Great Same skill. Well, with snooker, you have to use your brain. Quite right, Arthur. That's five on the trot. Do you want another one? Nah, it's a kid's game. Fiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, You're joking. We weren't playing for money. I'll get you a drink. I don't mind getting you a drink. Anyway, you've got to be moving. I promised Alfie. You can't let him down. I've got to meet with Sam. You'll be through by seven o'clock. All he wants you to do is be with him while he empties the machines in the laundrette. You could have asked a nice would... few bob in it for you. He usually has his boy Franco do it, but you can't expect him to work on his wedding day. Come on, then. where's his drink? What you having, Arthur? Oh, it's very nice, Charlie. I just say to Terry, it's a long time since Charlie got a drink in. Large vodka and slimline for me. Certainly. What do you reckon in the big one? I really appreciate this, Terry. Oh, I think nothing of it. Been keeping out of trouble these days. Reform character. That's the way it should be. And Arthur. He don't change, does he? <laughs> no. Don't know what he needs a minder for these days. He don't get up to any skullduggery, does he? Oh, no, no. Just makes him feel good, I think. Ah, he's a well-respected man, always has been. Well, it did me a favour anyway. Huh? What was that? I don't remember now. But he's always telling me he did me a favour, so I suppose he must have done. Much around here, then, eh? Uh, very clean neighborhood. Mm. Okay, man. Let's get baby some new shoes, huh?
Okay, don't nobody move. Ah! You understand me? Oh! Hurry! No, hold on, look. Whiskey's three one five. No, to that door. Where's the lead to? The old one, no. It's making their way to the rear exit. Come on, move it, move it! Listen, the man wants us to go through to the back room, all right? Come on. Ah! You must have been in there. Come on, move it, move it! All right. You two. Come on, get in there. Duck back. He's a nutter. He'll use it. What's the matter with you, man? Wake up! Okay, Winston, get that door. Oh, it's only locked, isn't it? Here are your keys. I ain't got them. Come on, give me the keys. What the hell are you messing about for? Look, empty his pockets. Yeah. Run down the back, run down here. Right, he's he ain't got any keys. Move away from him. Winston, you look. Woman, don't do Look, it. shut up, woman. It's too late now, anyway. Okay, mister. You make a move and I shoot anybody. I don't care who. They stretch. We can't give ourselves up. What you talking about? Give up? Give up what? Can't you see we got three um hostages? Yeah, that's right, lady. Hostages. What are you doing? I want to have a look, all right? Okay. The rest of you, sit down! Just do what he says to him. Sit down. Yeah, Terry. <laughs> yeah. Nearly all blood, isn't it? What you use, a seven shot? What the hell does it matter? I'm just interested. Seven shot makes a bigger mess. Two shot makes a bigger hole. I got good news for you, son. I'm gonna live. Are you the man that owns it? <laughs> yeah, love. Sorry about all this. It don't usually happen. No, you're right. It's quite unusual for this place. You. Answer him. Answer him? I couldn't even understand him. You heard me. Answer him! All right, all right. Okay. Uh, Oi! Look, look, it's only an ordinary door. Just talk normal. This is Chief Superintendent Gibson. Can you hear me? Yeah, terrific. Yeah. Now listen very carefully. The building is entirely surrounded. No possibility of escape. Many of the officers on duty here are trained marksmen. I suggest that you open this door Throw out all weapons and come out of that room one by one. No one will be harmed. Tell him bullshit. Can you understand me clearly? Yeah. Bullshit. No, tell him this ain't no ordinary robbery. Tell him this is political. Well, that's a great idea, Stretch, but you've left it a bit late in the day, don't you? All right. Uh, 
This is not an ordinary robbery. This is a political act. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, this is a demonstration for equality and freedom. And if you don't move away from the door, you might get your head blown off. Exactly what political group do you represent? Uh, we more or less represent a broad spectrum. Oh, yes. Irish? Um, uh, not so as you notice, no. Well, if we knew exactly what political group we were dealing with, maybe we could get somewhere. Over to you, pal. Uh -huh. Tell him the independent Rastafarian army. Hey, turn it in stretch, that's not right. Shut up, Winston, let me do the brain work, okay? Uh, apparently, they're the independent Rastafarian army. And what exactly are your demands? Well, look, there's an old lady in here who needs a cup of tea. We need a doc... All right, all right. Uh, when we're ready to talk again, we're banged three times on the door. Okay, get back over there. Move! Oh, move, all right, all right. Uh -huh. Hey, Stretch, you never told me nothing about the independent Rastafarian, what's it? Look, you're wearing a Rasta hat, ain't you? Yeah, why, well, sonny, because I like the colours. Yeah, he could be wearing his Fulham supporters, Woolly, couldn't he? Yeah, you think it's a big joke, huh? Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Hardman. Your buddy's gonna be the first one to fling out of here. How about that for a joke, huh? Mm. Well, you've got the shooter. Makes you top man, doesn't it? Right on. Except you ain't done too well so far, have you? It's 500 quid's worth of silver all over the pavement. <laughs> it's hardly the great train robbery, is it? And you're the man who screwed it up. How are we gonna get out of here, Stretch? I'm thinking about it. What are you crying for? You ain't a baby. Here, Stretch, I just thought of something. What? That independent Rastafarian army. You know how the initials come out, don't you? IRA. of the black horse, the taxing task. Once, a poor farmer was going about his business when... Excuse me, squire. Any chance of an aperitif? News of the talking pig brought people from afar. It's not like a pig's tail, I said, I don't know. It's said because it's too whirly. Including a wicked tax collector. He coveted the pig and set the farmer a horrible taxing task. <laughs> Complete this return by break of day, or with thy tattering hog, thou pay! <laughs> all night long they wrestled with the figures. Is that net or gross? The fateful morning came, and with it, the mail. He'd forgotten that Lloyd's Bank automatically provides credit interest statements to help with your tax return. And therefore, saving the farmer's bacon. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. The Credit Interest Statement, another legendary service from Lloyd's Bank. News on the hour, every hour from LBC. 
Police have now sealed off an area in West London where three people are known to be held as hostages by gunmen attempting to rob the OK Laundrette in Dalton Street. The gunmen were... Hello, sweetheart. just wondering about me washing. I mean, the programme should be finished now. They should be in a tumble dryer. Know what I mean? I don't like to think of them just lying there. All soggy. I think that goes for all of us. Look, no talking. I've got to think. You Terry's men? You bring one with you? Well, I could have, but Terry said you'd be a bit old for my mates. Fifty-two? He's young these days, sweetheart. Me and Paul Newman, same age. You don't look the same. <coughs> Come on, I'll take you and meet that little You should have been here about an hour ago. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Just had a report from the CRO computer at the yard. Mm -hmm. Alfred Cavallo is apparently the owner of the laundrette. No convictions for 20 years. McCann, tenants McCann. Bit of previous there, sir. Oh, yes. Two years for GBH and a three for attempted robbery. And he's supposed to be the hostage. Thank you, Sergeant. Who are you? Where are you going? Excuse me, sir. A serious crime squad. Evening, Super. What's the score? Who the devil are you? Arthur Daly. You got my boy, Terry McCann, in there. Your boy? All right, then, my associate. And I think I'm entitled... I am conducting this investigation now. See that incident van over there? I want you to go and stand there, and in a moment, one of my officers will come and interview you about any information you might have. I don't normally have a lot to do with the police. I said, over there. Two piece, sweetheart. Oh, uh, um, Tempe? Yeah. Oh, yeah, fine. Okay. Hey, just leave it to stretch, all right? <laughs> know what we're going to do? We're going to ask for a helicopter. Hey, Winston, answer it. Hello? Yeah, that's right. OK, Laundrette. It's for you. I told her never to ring me at the office. Just see to it. Hello? Hello, Arthur. It's Arthur Daly. What? I'm um, very well, thank you. How are you? You heard it on the radio. Apparently they've got TV cameras out there. It's a bit hard to say, really. Uh, apparently, they want an helicopter. Where to? London Airport. Then a jumbo jet to Ethiopia. Oh, I don't want to go there. That's Africa. It's in Africa. Our oh, spiritual leader's late Haile Selassie. That used to be Abyssinia. Uh, look, don't, don't tell me about Haile Selassie. I know all about Haile Selassie. He was to do with Mussolini before the war. Look, just sit. Get back down there on the floor. Right. <laughs> I don't want to go to Ethiopia. Oh, me neither. Well, that's where we're going. That's where everybody's going. How the hell are they going to get helicopter to land out there? There's hardly room for my roller. Hang up on me. Shows the sort of people he's dealing with, doesn't it? Hang up on me. Terry always doing this sort of thing. No, nah, of course not. I look after Terry. Don't worry about that. He'll make a few bob out of this. You and all, sweetheart. Hang about. Anyone interested in the latest developments? Police? Yeah. No, just say I am connected with the whole affair. Yeah, and? Well, basically, what we have here is a hostage situation. We know that. And did you know three men had hijacked the laundrette and want to fly it to Ethiopia? <laughs> What's it worth to get a picture of a girl who's going to marry one of the hostages? Want to? Yeah. Keep quiet, it's worth quite a bit. 
Fifty. Hundred. Just for us, then. Of course, just for you. Come on. Who's hostage? Terry McCann. Boxing man, eh? Oh, who is he? Very good middleweight in his day. One of the best never to get a title shot. Come on. Stick out your boobs and look tragic. You're on a score here. Yes. Okay. I'd go a drink. Cool, you look rough, mate. How'd you feel? About how I look. Here, Stretch. How about letting Alfie go to hospital? How about it? Come on. Well, he's a tough old bird, but he's lost a lot of blood. What are they going to give me in return? They said no deals. Well, it's tough on Alfie, eh? But he could die, Stretch. If we don't get some fresh air, we could all die. Uh -huh. Hey, you never told me you was going to use that gun. Think it was just for decoration, huh? I thought it was just to put the fighters on someone. You two wanted to be gangsters, eh? Yes, I didn't want to kill nobody. What's the matter with you? You're going on their side? I need some painkillers. I, I think my jaw's broken. Hey, maybe we could get him a drink. And some food, mm. and some painkillers. You two kids are really stupid. Look, you ask the pig for something, they want something in return. They ain't gonna do us no favours. At least we could ask. At least it shows them. Show them what? Shows them that we care about the other people. That we don't really want to harm no one. He's right, Stretch. But you're doing it the hard way, son. Murder, you go in for life. Attempted armed robbery, for seven. Come out in under five. How come you know so much about it? I used to keep bad company. Didn't I, off? <laughs> yeah. It's nothing these days. You keep bad company too? I was bad company, son. It's all my bird 20 years ago. It's when it was hard. Look at him now. All in the open university. Big Bob Whitney. I know he's got a bleeding degree. I never knew that. Yeah. Sociology. Still at the thieving, but now he knows why he's doing it. You're a hard man, eh, Terry? Well, let me tell you something. It ain't so easy for a black man to go straight. It ain't so easy for a black man to make it the way you did. Make it? Me? Oh, yeah, I've really made it, and I? Minding for a bloke who's collecting money out of washing machines. Yeah, I've really cracked it. Still, you never know. I might get a job at the post office at Christmas. Chief Super. He might have brought your helicopter and forgotten to tell us. Oi, you haven't forgotten all about us, have you? Don't worry, Mr. McCann, we're still here. Yeah, well, we've got a few problems in here. Mr. Cavallo's none the better. There's a geezer in here who thinks his jaw's broken, and I think we're suffocating. Oi, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. And the solution is quite simple. Just open this door. Yeah, we know all about that. Throw out the gun, come out with your hands up in the air. The only problem is, the man holding the gun doesn't want to do that. Well, why don't you just let me have another word with the man who's holding the gun? Oh, he wants to know where his helicopter is. I thought I'd explain that quite clearly. You people are not going to fly anywhere. 
Now look, we've got medical attention standing by. Mr. Cavallo will be treated the moment he is released. Yeah, all right. Well, what about some tea and food then? Oh, it's all to eat in there. Yeah, of course we have. Got 500 packets of biological washing powder. Well, perhaps if Mr. Cavallo is released, we can arrange to have some tea sent in. How about it then? No chance, man. Well, what about letting a doctor in, if they agree? Uh, listen! Listen, the shooting, it was an accident, really. The gun just went off. They didn't mean to kill anybody or anything. There was a sort of scuffle and the gun just went off. Quite possible, but that's something that has to be decided at the proper time and at the proper place. Now look, why don't I just have a word with a man who's got the gun? Sit down. Okay, mister. You're talking to the main man now. Hey, tell me something. You married? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Hey, missus, come over here. Yes, come on. Now, we've got a lady in here. Say hello to the policeman, Mrs. Mayhew. Hello, sir. Good evening, Mrs. Mayhew. Now, you think I'm fooling around, huh? Now, you tell him, Mrs. You tell him I've got a gun pointing right at your head. You tell him to do a deal, because you don't want to die. Now, go on, tell him! Did you hear that, sir? I think he means it. Now come along, just put that gun down. You know very well we're not talking any deals. You don't seriously want to hurt that lady. So just put the gun down. We can continue talking. I've got my finger on the trigger! You stretch. Take it easy, mate. Look, I know you're fighting a war. But she's not one of the enemy. But it's just a lady who came in to do a washing. Now take it easy, man. I know you're hard, man. If you don't want to shoot a woman, do you? Do you stretch? Oi, clock me, sweetheart. Never mind page three, you're on page one. On the front. The lonely woman who waits in hope. Not very nice of me, is it? Well, you're distraught, aren't you? And Terry's going to be well distraught, too, when he reads a bit about you two getting married. Yeah, I've only ever spoke to him twice. All the women and kids are asleep, eh, Terry? <laughs> Don't you trust the other two with a gun? Not if you're awake. And... It was going to be so easy, eh? What the hell you had to mess it up for? It wasn't your money? No, it wasn't yours either. So what? He rips it off from the people, I rip it off from him. Listen. They put 50p in a machine, and they sit there and watch their pillowcases go round and round. They got a choice. You come storming in with a shotgun, nobody's got a choice at all. They really got to you, eh? But you know what they really did? They just kidded you into going straight. Wrong. They bored me into it. Got fed up with people saying, three years, Wormwood Scrubs. 
someone loses a dog, I'm in the local nick for two days. So now, I'll just throw a few drunks out of clubs, ask people to repay their gambling debts, rent a muscle. Easy hours. But not a lot of what you might call job satisfaction. You let them beat you, man. And what are you going to be? Al Capone? Yeah. Bigger. Bigger. You got more chance of winning a pool, son. It's got to be for me, isn't it? Hello? Yeah, I thought it might be you. Oh, terrific. It's like an Egyptian brothel down here. No, Arthur, I know I've never been to Egypt. What I mean is it's a bit close, but like we're suffocating. Well, they haven't even sent any tea in. They always send tea in, don't they? What, what paper? Now, this reporter, this paper's prepared to pay a very handsome sum if he can do an interview over the phone. Hold on, Arthur. I know all that, but look, just listen to me for a minute. We're talking about real dough. Be enough to pay for their defence. A nice bit in it for you. Oh, Terry, listen to what I'm telling you. I'll be fair. I put a lot of time in on this. Now, don't be so selfish, Terry. I know your lives are in danger. That's the whole point of the interview, isn't it? It's a big story, see? Liz has got her photo on the front page this morning. Liz who? The bird you had a meet with last night. What's she going to do with her? She was upset thing how I felt. Look, we ain't interested in your girlfriends, all right? Now, what newspapers? What's he talking about? Well, you talk to him. You're the one who's running things. Okay, mister. You got a deal to make with me, all right? Look, I'm trying to explain to Terry that as long as you don't talk to nobody else, this paper will pay you a... Hello? Hello, can you, can you hear me? Hello? Cut us off. Sit down. Do you think I wasn't going to be bigger? Oh, that was the newspapers. Good morning. This is Chief Superintendent Gibson again. How are we this morning, friends? How is Mr. Cavallo? He's okay. He's in a bad way, Stretch, and you know it. What about our helicopter? Now, look, my friend, I've explained to you already. You people are not travelling anywhere. However, we are prepared to let you have some tea. I'll stuff your tea, man. Stretch a cup of tea? Yeah. Look, the meeting's over. We have nothing more to say to you. Very well, sir. We've got all the time in the world. Look, Stretch, I don't see why I can't have a cup of tea. Yeah. You're a real stupid, Winston. They put a drug in. Then what happens? Or I open the door. And you know what they do, like they did to the German aeroplane? They're throwing a grenade. Stuns everybody. Truth is, Stretch don't care. What are you talking about? You don't care what happens to anybody. And them out there, they don't care either, do they? Because whatever happens in here, they're all right. And all because you want to make a name for yourself. Big time gangster, that. <laughs> Big time gangster. Listen, son, you couldn't even break into a gas meter. Shut up! Look, he's working for the pigs. Oh, that crap's just for you two. He's trying to make you go against me. But he's right, isn't he? We've got no chance now. He was always a coward, Cosmo. Yeah, but it's like Terry said, Stretch. The Lord don't care. They can wait forever. Well, I ain't going to no prison. Going to have a senior either. <laughs> Winston, 
Knock on that door. Give me the gun, Terry. If he so much as blinks, I'll blow the bastard in half. That's all we need, isn't it? Yes, what is it? We want to come out. Just a minute. There will be a count of ten. Afterwards, you may open the door and throw out all weapons. There will be a further count of ten. Then the hostages will emerge one by one. Everyone leaving the room will have their hands above their heads. You will obey to the letter all instructions as you leave the room. Remember, there are trained marksmen watching your every move. Do you understand? Right. You get stretch on his feet. Can you count to ten? Yeah. Start counting. I'm opening the door. Alfie, this is Mayhew. You're right, love. Listen, love, don't stop and collect your washing on the way out, eh? That's a turn up, isn't it? Sorry? You're going to be a prosecution witness. Yippee. Who told you? Mrs. What's her name? And Alfie Cavallo. Quite the hero, they reckon. So, we're going to need a nice, long statement. Some other time. You'll probably end up with a judge's commendation. I wouldn't know what to do with it. Oh, look, Terry, do yourself a few favours, eh? I mean, you could do with a bit of credit rating round here. Yeah, yeah. But right now, all I want is a wash and a shave and a nice big breakfast. And then, I'm going to do what you do every day. 
And what's that? Sleep. Hello. <laughs> That's it, love. Right, now closer. Yeah. And again. Turn this way a bit. This way. Arthur, what's all this about? It's the joyful reunion, isn't it? <laughs> you don't got yet, lovely. And again. You know the mistake you made, Tony, don't you? No, tell me, what was the mistake I made? Should have stayed in the laundrette another couple of days. Got more press coverage. Arthur, oh, we were dying in there. You know, if I'd stayed any longer, you would have got me married, divorced and done for alimony. Oh, poor old Alf was on his last legs. You, what are you talking about? Flesh wounds. He was well pleased with you, though. I should be able to get a bit more dough out of him for us. Us? Us? <laughs> now, why would you be entitled to more dough? The aggravation I had, the worry. I was up all night. Of course you were, Arthur. I'm sorry I forgot about that. Besides, you got all the publicity.